going on guys? Nick Santini here and on today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to remove thermal paste and how to reapply thermal paste uh, to your CPU and this was a video requested by one of our viewers and so with the help of my old computer here I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let's get started. So before we get started there's two things that you're going to need. The first thing is isopropyl alcohol. Um, you can either get that in 70% or 90%. I get mine in the form of these uh, alcohol prep pads, and the reason why I use these is because it's really handy to just wipe it away from your CPU, and you don't really have to worry about spilling any of the alcohol on your system, which I really like. So um, these are pretty handy. And then the next thing you're going to be using are coffee filters. Now, to be honest, you can use any kind of lint-free towel. Um, basically anything lint free because you don't want any of those lint like particles or anything um, being stuck to your CPU or um, staying on your CPU when you go to apply more thermal paste. So all it has to be is something that's lint free and that can be disposed of. So I find the easiest thing to use is these coffee filters. So the first thing you're going to want to do is step onto an anti-static mat if you have one. If you don't happen to have an anti-static mat, the other thing you can do is touch a large metal object such as my workbench but even the PC case will do a good enough job of getting rid of that extra static electricity. So you can go ahead and just touch your PC case and you should be fine. Now, it takes 3000 volts of electricity for you to even feel the static discharge when you touch something. So keep that in mind. You definitely won't feel it, but you could possibly fry some of your components inside your computer if you don't discharge that static electricity. So after we discharge the static electricity, we are now in the case. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our screwdriver and we're going to begin to remove each of the four screws holding the CPU cooler down. Now, it isn't going to matter what CPU cooler you have. Um, this process is going to be the same no matter what. So we're going to lift up this CPU cooler. Looks like I still have the CPU um, fan header plugged in. So you want to remove that as well. So we're going to take this out of the way. We're just going to set it off to the side there. Now you can see there's a bunch of uh, thermal paste that's still on there. So the first thing I always do is I'm going to take a coffee filter. We're just going to take a normal coffee filter and I like to kind of just fold it so I can get, you know, some leverage on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wipe this away. Now the reason why I don't use alcohol at first is because I want to just get, you know, the majority of it up with the coffee filter. And the coffee filter doesn't do a great job of getting all of this up by itself. Um, but it's good to start off with just the coffee filter. So don't be afraid uh, to use a lot of coffee filters. Um, use as many as you need because coffee filters are pretty cheap and you want to do a good job just so that you can guarantee yourself the best uh, you know, CPU temperatures as possible. So you definitely want to do a good job when you do this. All right. Now that I've cleaned off, um, I would consider most of it, probably 80 to 90% of it. That's when I start using my alcohol pads to get the rest of it off. So I'm just gonna open up this alcohol pad. All right. I just rub it in a circular motion. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Now, if you don't have any of these, what you could have done is taken a coffee filter and taken some alcohol and just dump the alcohol um, on the coffee filter. And that way you could have achieved the same thing as this. And you don't have to worry about really spilling too much of that alcohol onto your uh, computer. I'm just going to use one more for safe measure. Again, I'm just rubbing in a circular motion. Um, you definitely don't want to get down like near the socket. You definitely just want to stay on that heat spreader. 
And then I'm just gonna use one more coffee filter just to make sure that it's perfectly dry before I start adding thermal paste. So as you can see, that's a pretty clean CPU and I'm satisfied with that. So we're gonna move on to the heat sink. So there's our heat sink. You can see there's quite a bit of thermal paste on that as well. Um, sometimes I can go a little bit heavy with the thermal paste, but I think it's probably in some cases a little bit better to have slightly too much than slightly too little. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to do the same exact process where we start by getting the bulk of it off with just the coffee filter. Just like that. So you can see, I mean, it's on there pretty good. So this thermal paste has been on here for quite a while. This is my old system. So um, yeah, I think this thermal paste has probably been on here at least a year. All right, so then we're gonna take the alcohol pad again. And we're just gonna rub that down really good. Now, it's important once you have the CPU cooler clean and the CPU clean, not to touch it. All right, because we just spent all that time cleaning that off. We don't want anything to get onto um, the cooler or to be able to get in the way between the thermal paste, the CPU, and the heat sink. So make sure we don't touch those. All right, don't touch it. And then we'll be ready to apply the thermal paste. So when it comes to adding thermal paste, there's two accepted ways to do this. And the one way is to put about a pea-sized drop of thermal paste in the middle of the CPU, which I'll demonstrate right now. So that may not seem like a whole lot, but that amount will be perfect, all right? Um, now, like I said, if for whatever reason you think that may not be enough, you, I mean, you can add a little bit more if you want to, um, but generally about that much is going to be perfectly fine. So now that I have this cleaned off, the other accepted way is to put a line the size of a grain of rice on the CPU. Um, direction really doesn't matter, but you want to try to center it. All right, so something like that would be perfectly fine as well. Some thermal paste companies are very particular as to how you apply the thermal paste, but in my testing, I've noticed that it really doesn't matter. Um, either of those two methods will be just fine. It's always a good idea though to check your CPU manual just to make sure and to also check the thermal paste manual um, or instructions online just to make sure that you're applying it correctly. So now that we have that ready to go, we are going to go ahead and put the CPU cooler back on. So, once you have it screwed in place, we're going to plug in the CPU fan into our CPU header on our motherboard. And at that point, you're all set. Just make sure that the CPU cooler is screwed in tightly and you'll be good to go. So just to show you how much that spreads out, that's the thermal paste after only being on there for just a little bit. One thing to note is that over time, this thermal paste will continue to spread out as it heats up. So don't be alarmed if, you know, adding just a little bit of thermal paste seems like it's not enough. It's definitely enough and it will spread out over time. Well guys, there you have it. I hope you learned something new. Um, and if you did, leave a like on the video. I really appreciate likes. And uh, same thing with subscribing if you wanna see more awesome videos like this. Uh, it really helps me out. So if you guys could subscribe, that'd be awesome. I'll also have some links down in the description for some of the things that you saw here. 
Um, I'll put some links down and below for what I think are the best thermal pastes. Um, whichever thermal paste you go with, it isn't going to be that big of a deal. Some are just better than others, so I'll have links to some of the better ones in the description. And if you want to check out some of my other videos, like my PC building videos or my water cooling loop videos, uh, make sure to check out the links in the description or the little eye up there. And as always guys, I'll see you on the next one.